So hello guys, I hope you are doing great today. I am Vansha Zarora and I am a coding instructor with Avidia Labs. Is we are going to learn to make a game on Quick XR, a 3D game. So without a further ado, let's just jump into our scene and start learning about the game that we are going to create today. We'll click on free free play and then. create our own scene i have one created already called the jumping obstacle game let me just click on it and we'll open our scene so as you can see we have this scene with us this is a 3d plane which has nothing on it as of now because we've just opened the scene we have a number of panels here and a coding panel here which you can open or close as per our needs we are going to create a mario game a lot of you must have played mario i know so today we are just going to uh, create a small snippet of the uh, super mario game what we are going to do is like let's just first discuss the story line so that you know that what we are talking about we will be creating a game in which a mario a character will be jumping over some obstacles maybe a mushroom and maybe it will jump whenever it jumps over it there will be a, a score that will increase and obviously there will be a, a sound of ouch or maybe the there'll be an expression change with the character as and when we see that the objects are touching each other or they are colliding Let us just move ahead and just start off with a beautiful scene. How do you create a scene or an environment here in Quick XR? Since there is, this is the beta version of Quick XR, we have about ten to twenty scenes or environments that we can take out from here. In the left hand side panel, where we have a number of panels which from which you can select. we'll look at them as and when we proceed in the game as you can see the environments that we have here are with the with various names forest contact egypt yavapai gold mine three towers poison tons of them can be included slowly and steadily we'll be increasing the number of them right now let me just select an amazing beautiful environment that obviously i have seen before it is called arcus let's just open arcus i'll a lot of times you will see that there is this small uh, checker kind of uh, positioning that comes on there and like a checkered uh, view that you can see all you have to do is just click on the axis gizmo which to which you can just take this upwards a bit and yeah now you are sorted with that issue before we move ahead and i tell you about everything let me just make it clear that what are the various gizmos and what are the various handles that you can use and some shortcuts which you can keep in handy whenever you are learning on quick xr using w key which is the w key on your keyboard you can use this placement or movement uh, at gizmos which to which you can move them on the three axes the three axes that are the x y and z depending upon your position the x y and z will change so you can just move it upwards this is the whole scene that we are moving and you can move it towards yourself or away from yourself and in a similar fashion you can also move it in the third axis in on the right hand side or the left hand side all of these positions keep on changing depending upon the view that you are looking them from more of this concept in further more videos right now let's just move on to the second shortcut key that is the e key on your keyboard to which you can rotate the whole scene you can use all of these four 
uh, gizmos, uh, rotation gizmos through which you can rotate your whole uh, whole positioning, and you can uh, you can see that how your object is in uh, in which uh, proper rotation is your object in. You can use this one to rotate it like this. Similarly, like the movement gizmos, you can move them in the all of the three three axes, and it makes your task. It, it makes your uh, work very very easy. The second method to do that is also through. Let me move my video a little bit side so that I can show you what exactly I am coming to. On this right hand side panel, you can see there is this transforms button where you have this position, rotation, and scale option. Right? You can just click on the rotation option, and you will get an option to actually rotate it manually. Like typing the numbers, the degrees, right? So you can type a degree, one eighty degrees in x. Right now it is one eighty degrees in x, fifty point five one degrees in y, and minus one eighty degrees in z. So you can use these two. But when you have the shortcut keys, and I am here to tell you them, then why do you worry? You just have to use these uh, gizmos and turn them all around as per your need. Coming to the third. and the most important uh aspect or the most important shortcut that you may use the r key through the r key you can increase or decrease the scale or the size of the whole scene of the of every object that comes on you will look how i'll change the uh, rotation the movement as well as the scale of these objects as and when we take them inside the scene and play with them you can use this white colored gizmo to scale it uniformly in all the three axes or you can use these yellow blue and pink or red green and blue gizmos to scale them in the various axes in which they are pointing towards right by default we always keep these gizmos or the modes the shortcut modes to w okay so we have the w mode i am telling this in this particular video as this is our first video and i uh i would like you to just take notes of these so that you remember whatever i am talking about and you, i would suggest that you go on and give get a hands on experience on quick xr yourself moving forward now we have a beautiful scene set up and we should move ahead and get our characters in the character panel which is this flower like looking icon on quick xr let's just click on the search button and click and and uh, search for mario press enter and you will get a lot of results where you can see that how uh, like what kind of character you want to choose so i would like to go with a 3d mario because obviously we are teaching 3d games so why not go with a 3d mario i'll click on it i'll click on it and it will come on uh, in this scene at the position of Zero zero zero, which is x comma y comma z. It will be at the origin of the whole three D space, right? All we have to do is just rotate our view a bit. Okay, to rotate your view, you have the left arrow key. You can rotate your view, your camera angle from which you are viewing the whole scene from the left arrow key. Okay. and you can uh, click on the right right click you, uh, you can use the right mouse key to actually pan throughout your scene okay you can move yourself around the scene using the left arrow key and using the scroller on your mouse that is the third button that your mouse has in general you can just zoom in or zoom out as per your requirement for now let's just focus on the mario character that we have got in this interesting looking red cap blue colored character let me just bring it up a bit so that it is it looks like it's standing 
on this scene, right? I'll just try to move it in a, in a way, in a fashion, to rotate it in a fashion in which it looks, we have, a, we have like an empty scene so that an, there is an, there's enough space for our mushroom or an obstacle. This is our main character and we'll have an obstacle now, right? So I'll just position it in such a way that we have an, uh, the position for an obstacle to, to just come in here and we can move it in the way we want the game to proceed. Rotating it, as I told you, using my W, E, R keys, I'll rotate it, scale it and move it. Perfect. I think it is in the right position now. We have a good amount of space available for our obstacle to come in and our Mario to jump over it. Okay, so what do you think we can keep for the obstacle? The best part, the best way to keep it would be a mushroom that is in a general Mario game. Let's just click on our models panel again and search for a mushroom. Press and enter. And here you go. There are, there are a lot of mushrooms you can check out and you can just bring them in. I would like this red colored, red colored and white uh, stem mushroom here on my scene. So we have this mushroom on our scene now. Let's place it in a way that it is exactly or almost approximately at the position where uh, at, at in the same line in which it is the, the Mario or the character that you, you have selected is right. So you can just put it here. You can use, you can just click on it and you can move it in whichever direction you may feel fit. Just make sure that you are not taking it below the axis, below the, uh, below our character, below our scene or the environment, because then it would not look like it is put upon that. Instead it is, it would look like it is uh, below the ground, right? And we don't want that to happen. So let's just keep it in a way that it looks above the ground. Now let's scale it. Now, what do you think should be the scale of this mushroom? This mushroom should all this mushroom or this obstacle, whatever it may be in your case, when you are making it, it should always be smaller than your character because you want your character to jump over it, right? So if it is not small, then your character would have to jump a lot of a, a huge amount, but you don't want to, you don't want that. So let's just scale it in a fashion so that it is just a bit smaller than Mario, right? Again, let's just place it in the right direction, in the right manner on our scene. Now, if you want to just check that if your mushroom is in the right place, you just have to check that if it is in exactly in a collinearity with your Mario character. If it is, great. You've done your job. Now you have a beautiful scene with the Mario character and the mushroom here present on your scene. Now let's just discuss the storyline and how we have to proceed so that you, you understand whenever I make something, it should make sense to you. Now, what we are doing is you're just creating it in a, in a way that the mushroom moves towards the character that is the Mario, you want the mushroom to move towards the Mario and then the Mario should jump over it and should like skip the obstacle and jump over the obstacle. And if they collide, there should be some kind of indication that you have crossed or, or broken a rule of the game, right? There should be some indication. Coming to, now, coming to the code part now, as you already know how the storyline should look and you can just see a number of panels here, which uh, there, are, there are menus which have different, different code blocks, which make things very easy for you, right? So you just have to click on the uh, event panel 
and you everything that you start with is will be starting with an event everything starts with an event like what hap what will happen like what do you want it what what do you want the whole game to do before you before you start with something right so everything happens with an event so this is the event panel every time you uh, go about writing the code starting the code event panel will be used at the start there are a number of options here where which are like uh, clicking the uh, play play key which is this play key red colored play key uh where clicking the space or a sub any any kind of arrow up arrow down arrow left arrow a b c d all of the letters and uh, uh, keys that you have let me just delete it for now we don't need it so let's so similarly we have a lot of panels transform panels which is used to move objects action panel which is used to set opacity to group group objects maths to add something multimedia to play sounds and videos colors to change colors object to set positions animations collision handle the collisions this time we'll be using the collisions option stay tuned now coming to our uh, like what we have to start with what do we want our let's focus character by character okay what do we want our mario to do we want it to jump in the y direction every time right whenever we press some key on our control so what key would you like to press i would like to press the up arrow key and just jump it in a direction in a fashion that the mario jumps and it looks like it's skipping trying to skip the obstacle so we have this code block whenever an up arrow key is pressed the code that code that i'll write below this will be running right then comes the uh, main thing that we want the mario to do whenever an up arrow key is pressed what do you want should happen you want the mario should move up stay there then come down right so what we have to do is go to the transform panel select the kind of control you want over your character and which character you want the control on let's just select the move code block you clicked on it you select the mario because you want the mario to move in a direction that is upwards then come down in a direction that is downwards and also to stay there in the in the air for just a second so that the whole animation does not look abrupt we have the move you can just right click and duplicate the whole code then drag it and drop it below the move code now you want before it goes up and comes down so you so you want it to you want it to move downwards right and here you want it to move upwards you can take one second depending upon the way you want it i would suggest it should be 1 second and you can move the mario about 7 meters up for this for checking what is the amount that you should move the mario to you can just click on the mushroom once check the transforms panel and check its uh, scale that is 0.39 only so moving the mario 7 meters above the ground would be more than enough so that because it has only the dimension of only 0.39 right so here here is how you can check that what you want how much jump or how much thrust you want to give to your character so it will move 7 meters above the ground then come down 7 meters fr uh, from that position you also wanted to stop in between what you can do is go to the control panel control menu if you may call it like that and wait for a number of seconds whatever the number you want you can select it you can place it in between the both moves moving up and moving down and like 
maybe just put a 0.5 second gap in the air. Now we can just, or maybe uh, 0 0.5 or 1, whatever you may deem fit. Now we have a code set up that whenever the up arrow key is pressed, the <clears throat> Mario will move up in the air by seven meters in one second, stay in the air for one second, and then come down the same seven meters onto the ground, back to the ground, <coughs> the same seven meters in one second. Now to add some flavor to the whole thing, what we can do is have some voice or some sound playing all the time while we are having this amazing uh, animation of Mario. We can go on the sound panel in on the left, which looks like this sound tune. You can have a, you can select from a number of voices or sounds, right? Let's just select a strong wind. Okay. So you can select the sound where a strong wind option, which will help you to just have a sound of a strong wind whenever the Mario jumps. It would look cool in my opinion. So just go. Now you can just go on multimedia in the code. Now comes the multimedia that I told you in the start. We have this multimedia option where you can just start playing a sound instantly whenever you want your whenever you want a sound in your whole game. So you can just drag and drop it. Whenever you press the up key, you want a strong wind sound to come and play, right? Now, when do you want the sound to stop? You want the sound to stop whenever the Mario touches the ground and it will touch the ground after the move down step has been provided with you. So just click on stop sound and just add it below the move button, move code block. We have the strong wind added. Now you have a whole code block here where you can just look at how your Mario is interacting with the game, with the game and like just jumping whenever you wanted to. To check it out, you, you can always uh, go to the play button. You can save your code first of all. Don't forget to save it. Always save it. Then click on the play button. And if we dry run it, what should happen is we can, if whenever you play, play, press the up arrow key, a sound should be played. That should be a strong wind sound. It should move the Mario seven meters up, then make it wait in the air for one second and then make it let it come down seven meters in one second, right? And then the sound stops. This is what our code block shows. Let's just play the button and just see how it is interacting. Actually, I press the up arrow key and as you can see, a sound of the air is coming and the Mario is moving up and down. I'm not sure if you're able to hear the sound, but it is playing. You can check that out in your own editor. So yeah, just go out right now and like check a hands-on experience. Coming to this next part, we can move the code block so that we get the space and we can always zoom it out so that we get more space for more code blocks. Coming to the second code block, that is what you want the second character that is your mushroom to do. You want your mushroom to move towards the Mario and then disappear from there and then come back to this position. And while it does this, it should also have a small aspect that whenever if it touches Mario, there should be some indication that the rule has been broken. Let's just break this whole thing that I said into two parts. First, we'll move the uh, mushroom from its current position to the position that we wanted to and bring it back and 
let keep it doing that in a loop without we uh, telling it to move we just want to play the button and it should start moving again and again right let's just do that first secondly the second code block that we'll be creating will be about colliding of these two objects and whenever it collides some indication will be there let's just start with the mushroom part very interesting moving animation just pay all of your attention here and try to do and note it down coming it coming again to the play button whenever we play we were whenever uh, coming to the event panel again we whenever we uh, click on the play or uh, uh, button what should happen is our mushroom should start moving towards the mario in a fashion that it should uh, just go behind it and disappear right and it should move in a straight line for this section of the code i would suggest you to keep the view of your whole game in this way right so, uh, in in the way of a top view you have you should have the top view of your mario and your mushroom why you will get to know when we proceed when we click click where like where what the code block means is whenever the play key is clicked right so what should happen when the play key is clicked you should have your uh, mushroom moving towards the mario so let's just select the transform and move button instead of this move we'll cut this part what you can do is you just want what you want to do is you want to move the uh, mushroom towards the mario now you can use a transform of transform code block for this wherein you can mention that what exact amount do you want your mushroom to move right so you want your mushroom to move in a in a manner that it goes behind the uh behind the mario so how will you know that where you want your mushroom to go just take first of all just take the move code block add it below the when clicked uh code block and select the mushroom now now comes the big question that when where to move the mushroom and how to select it how to how to select the right uh, coordinates for uh, the movement of our mushroom this particular code block will help you move in what whichever direction you write the number and it will just move the number of steps right so you just have to select it's very easy in fact you should just select the mario you can select and check the transform uh, options and just check the position at which mario is right now so the mario is a, is at the position of 15.7 in the x axis right and in the z axis is 0 and in the y it is 5.79 right what you want it to do is you want the mushroom i'm i'm keeping you reminding you because you should remember what you want the mushroom to do you should you want it to go behind the mario so you have noted that the transform says that mario is at x is on the 5.70 x in in the x x axis click on the mushroom check the transform again the mushroom is at minus 7.2 on the x axis so first of all i would suggest you that you should move you should not keep the mushroom and the object so far away you should always try to keep them a bit close the maximum distance between them should be 
around 12 to 15 right 12 to 15 uh, units so right now as you can see we have a distance of 15.7 that is in the positive and minus 7 that would be somewhere around 22 so you have a 22 step distance which is a fairly big distance so you don't want that to happen so you will just move the mushroom in the direction where it is still in the straight line with the Mario, but it should be always be aligned with the ground. You have to keep on checking that. Click and select about should be around minus two and 15 it can be even closer. It can be around zero, one, around zero, 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 aim for zero. Okay. Okay. Minus zero point one seven completely fine. Let's just move ahead with this. Now you have a distance of about minus zero point seven. That is zero point one seven. That is. 7.17 approximately plus 15.7 that is around 16 16 ish and yeah that's pretty cool with us we don't have any issues in that now you have to move the mushroom about 16 steps in the x-axis and that is how it will move behind the man right so just click on it and select 16 or maybe let's keep it 17 so that it goes behind because 16 is will be somewhere around on the Mario. We want it to go be, beyond the Mario, right? So we will select about say 17. So you will move the Mario 17 steps in the X axis and it will go behind the, uh, the, you will move the mushroom 17 steps and it will go behind, behind the Mario. You have selected that you have done it rightly. Now you want it to move in five seconds. So there is one small difference. What do you have to do here? So you don't have to make that mistake. I made it so that I can explain that to you. You just have to select move in the number of time. We have another code block that is even optimized based on the time in which you time in which you want to move your object to a certain position from a certain position. So just bring it outside, take this one out. And whenever you move the code block out from here, it gets disabled automatically, which means it is null and void. You can use it in some other code block. When you use it in some other code block, then it will be enabled, right? So select the same options, the mushroom about 17 and in seconds use five. So it will move 17 steps towards the Mario, go behind the Mario, and all of that will happen in 15 seconds. The mushroom is now set up, but there is a small issue. You want that your mushroom should, should wait every time the code is set. You should always have a weight control so that the positioning is set up and there is no glitch or abruptness in your whole code. So always use the weight feature in your code so that abruptness of the code is minimized and the animation is not abrupt. So we can set a weight of weight period of five seconds. Now we want this whole thing to go on forever. We want it to loop up again and again. So till we are playing the game or until at least we have not violated the rules of the game, right? So just click on the control panel again and select the forever option. That is the forever loop. That is the infinite loop. That is a loop where which will not end until unless the whole code ends or you violate something. So you just keep, keep it under the for loop 
and then bring the whole forever loop for the for, forever loop and bring the whole forever loop under the when uh, cl- uh, when played when play button is clicked code block now we have this whole code set up for our mushroom you can delete this one because we won't be needing it right now you have this whole code set up for your mushroom which will be moving it in a loop forever loop right you want to you want that the position of the after the after the after the mushroom has moved behind the mario now you want that the mushroom should come back to its original position that is this position exactly right now right so after every iteration or after after every time the mushroom has crossed the mario you want it if it has it, if there is has been no uh, fault if you did not lose the game if you had won the game if you have played it in a nice fashion then it should come back to its original position that is this on the scene right now and then it should come go back and uh, come come again towards the mario so that you can increase your score and levels we can have multiple levels that will be a bit complex but we'll come up again to that in a later video so for now what you want to do is you want to set it back to its position so for setting it back what you need is a transform control transform in the transform panel just select a set key set code block and here you can just drag and drop it behind below the weight and you want it to come behind below the whole uh, thing you want it you want it to set back to its original position and now what is the original position the original position will be the same that has been uh, mentioned in the transform controls right now that will be minus 0.17 4.18 and minus 16.6 so let's just type it in i just drag and bring it here so that we can tally it without a fault so minus 0.17 great similarly in the y and similarly in the z great you are really good to go what you have to do is just keep it below this so that it does not interfere with this transform panel and you can just you now you have a code of the mushroom moving behind the mario then coming back to its original position and it's doing that in a loop right so it moves on forever and you know, unless the game is going on coming to the third part that is the collision now comes the most interesting part of our game and it is the collision you want your uh, code to uh, your, you want your code to be set up in such a fashion that if the two objects your mario and uh, your mushroom are collided you want them to you want them to stop You don't want the game. You want, or maybe stop, or you want them to, uh, like indicate in some way that it does not be, it is not the right way that we had played the game, or we have broken a rule. So the last code block will be the again a when clicked option because you want it the code to detect the if the collision is there or not from the very start. so what you can do and what you need to do is you need a situational kind of a code block here that if the collision happens then you have to take an act, action otherwise you don't have to take an action right for using such kind of 
for using such kind of a uh, a uh, code block where we need to just uh, use an uh, use a situational kind of a code you you can use this amazing code block that is the if else or if do code block right you can go to the control panel again and you can see this if do code block that is present here just drag it bring it to below your main code that you just have created and just select a position a uh, situ uh, situational condition that you want that why what if like if what should happen then you can do something that you want the code to do so we want if a collision happens we want the game to have some indication right so we will select our uh, collision code block that will be there in the object panel just remember that we have this collision between objects uh code block just drag it to this diamond or hexagonal kind of uh slot that we have select your two uh objects that you have that is a mushroom and a mario and if there is a collision between both of these objects you want them to show an indication now the big question again that what do you want should be a indication maybe our mario can say ouch or have some other kind of a noise right so let's not go into the sound aspect as it is a relatively first a very initial video and i don't want that you guys get any complexity right now so what we can do is we can just take an ouch uh, dialog box whenever this kind of thing happen whenever a collision is taking place you want your character that is the mr mario you want it to just say or make a small dialog box of ouch so you can use a code block which is the action code block and here you have this little code of uh, letting your character say something and what happens when uh, we apply this you will see that in the code but for for your information it will just show the character saying something in a small dialog box okay in a, a show of small dialog box will be shown and you will be able to see that something has happened something which is not right or maybe some whatever the conversation that a character wants to tell you on when something happens right so when collision happens mario will what do you want the mario to say so mr mario says ouch because the mushroom has hit him right so he has to say ouch so he says ouch whenever the collision between mario and mushroom happens great now what else do you you have this whole code block set up you have this uh, whole thing whole game ready for you that is to whenever the key is pressed the sound of Mario. Whenever you press the key, the a Mario will make a sound. It will jump. It will come down. Your mushroom will move towards it. It will be uh, passing through it. If a collision happens, they will make a sound. Uh, they will. They will make this Mario will say "ouch." But don't you think if it just says "ouch," that will not be a very good interface for the game? So we want. to this we want that the game should stop right there or you should not be able to play further how you can do that is you just stop showing the visibility of your mushroom so whenever there is this uh collision you want your mushroom to disappear we have a code block for that too and that is so amazing so we have this action and just to set the visibility of something to true or false 
you see there are two options true or false so whenever a collision is happening whenever a collision is taking place what will happen it will say ouch the mario will say ouch and the mushroom it will be disappearing that is our visibility will be setting it to false great you have now completely correctly done what you wanted it to do but you want it to do it repeatedly you want it to check again and again that if this collision is taking place or not so you want that to happen repeatedly you don't want that the collision to take place once and then it should not detect the collision the collision collision should be detected every time and if and if and do situational condition should be applied every time when the game is being played so we want it to be forever so as you must have guessed by now we need this forever loop here again so we'll just click the whole code block bring it under forever and now the whole code will take it below when clicked so you have now the whole game sorted but when you have disappeared the an object when you have set the visibility of the mushroom to false there is another small issue that will be popping up that is your visibility for the for the whole game for the whole code will be set to invisible but you don't want that to happen you want whenever a guy replays it whenever he clicks the replay button there should be the visibility of our mushroom very very well visible and playing again so when we can add a visibility when it is clicked right here we want a visibility panel to be come up again so we need to set the visibility to true right so just duplicate this code block drag it drop it before the forever loop starts you want the mushroom to be visible to your player so just save this code you have the whole code set up right now in front of you right also whenever the game restarts whenever the game is being replayed whenever the collision had happened and now the player is coming back to play the game you also want the mushroom should start from the very start from the very beginning that is the same position that it was in the starting of the game right so you will set the position that is you can you can always copy and paste and save a lot of your time by just right clicking duplicating the code and adding it to wherever you want so you will set up the whole thing you will set the mushroom you will you will first display the visibility then you will set the mushroom to the exact position that it you wanted it to be and like that was the starting position that was of the mushroom right so now after a whole lot of efforts you have created your first ever mario mushroom game so your mario will be now jumping and coming back and now it will be always uh keeping your uh, your your player entertained by jumping over the mushroom and having uh, having an ouch sound as you have set up a say ouch option here whenever it stops right so you have this full game set up now how about we just have a demo play save the code play the red button and wait for the magic we just uh by mistake set the wrong direction for our mushroom we need to rotate it in a fashion so that it is moving in the right direction so we need it to move towards the mario and its x should be in the same direction what do we use we just use our e and you rotate it in a manner that it is having the whole axis 
right? Or else, if not the axis, you can just keep it in a manner that it is always pointing in a way it is straight lined with your object. So you can just keep it at a position that is similar to your object that is similar to what it was right now. I just tweaking the position of the Mario a bit and just like we keeping the whole mushroom in one same position so that we don't have to change the whole code. This is how you need to change and apply your brain to just quickly change whatever mistake you must have done in the code and debug the code quickly, right? So we just applied our uh, applied basic maths and used uh, our gizmos to move the Mario in front of our mushroom and now it is correctly aligned. Now we have, the, we can play the save key and we can, we can press the save key and now we can quickly try and play it. So as you can see, it is moving and as we had planned, we did not make the Mario jump. And so as the Mario is not jumping, it got an ouch expression. It said that, ouch, you hit me. And here we have guys, a whole Mario game for you. I'll just show you again what we have made. Just try to go about the whole process in the right manner. Yeah, so you have your obstacle and Mario game set up for you guys. And whenever it collides, it says ouch and the mushroom just disappears and your character is alone in the whole environment. You can create 3D, amazing 3D games in block coding in a very, very, very easy manner. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Take care.